morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for speaking in English, but of course my knowledge of Slavic language and Polish is zero. And, uh, so we have to go to an international language. I try not to speak uh, too fast. Uh, if I do speak too fast, uh, please make uh, signs. Don't shoot. Just tell me that I am going too fast. Uh, I think uh, you all uh, know about LibreOffice. I will uh, try to tell you about a little bit about the story of the of this software. You know that we have uh, a ten-year heritage in uh, in OpenOffice. That was the story uh, started in uh, 2000, in the year 2000, when uh, Sun decided to give the, the code of Star, of Star Office to the community. At that time, this was the the tree of dependencies of Star Office. Uh, it was a quite uh, a simple software at the time, but of course. Uh, uh, by focusing on the development and by focusing on uh, uh, growing the software, in 2005 the program was slightly fatter uh, and the number of dependencies started to be in the size of millions. And the community that in the year 2000 was a very small community, uh, probably a dozen people, uh, because uh, free software was younger, it was probably the first time that a real desktop application was becoming a free software. Uh, free software at first was mainly, uh, let's say, server-side based or mainly a technically based software. So uh, OpenOffice was the first uh, real uh, end-user software. And the community started to grow. And the community started to grow in different directions. Uh, so we, we started to have to add a few developers, but uh, in addition to developers, the community started to grow with other people like myself. I entered the Open Office community in 2004, and I've never been a developer in my life. I, actually, I cannot write any kind of code apart from uh, XML. And, uh, and I have problems in writing XML, actually. Uh, but uh, I have been involved in marketing uh, of high technology <coughs> products since 81. And I've done marketing of high technology products for, uh, I can say, most of the biggest companies, starting from Apple and uh, ending uh, to Xilin. I, don't, uh, I never worked for a company uh, based on, with, a, with a Z as first letter. But I work for Adobe, Compaq, um, I work for IBM uh, as a consultant. I work uh, as an employee for Anywhere Information System. So let's say that in 2004 uh, I had a kind of 23 years experience on marketing of high technology products. So the community started to challenge Sun Microsystem that until uh, 2005 was completely in charge and in control of the project. Started to challenge on, uh, on areas like uh, uh, you should uh, grow the community in other directions, you should uh, uh, do a little bit uh, to uh, ease the stepping of uh, new developers and so on. So one year after, so in 2006, at the Lyon conference, that was an open office conference. At the Lyon conference, the main architect of uh, open office, uh, Mr. Michael Bemmer, uh, actually, all the co development of uh, open office has always been in Germany, in Hamburg, uh, made this presentation. And, uh, just try to remember this, uh, this slide because there are three points that is reduction of code complexity, uh, easier access to patch handling, and uh, mentoring newbies. 
uh, at the time to get into open office for someone that wanted to uh, become a contributor to the project was nearly impossible in development and in technically related areas because the program uh, has always been a complex one, around 12 uh, million lines of code and uh, it was converted in German. So having a code converted in German uh, means that you have to know German to start coding and uh, that maybe in Poland you know, in German is, uh, is quite normal, but uh, in other countries, knowing German is uh, out of reach. And you can understand uh, in the United States, for instance, where they speak only one language, which is English, uh, working on a code uh, commented in German was just impossible. So that's uh, what was said in 2006, but nothing happened. Nothing happened until 2010, when at the 10th anniversary, uh, adding the fact that uh, in the meantime Oracle acquired Sun Microsystem, and it was clear since day one that Oracle didn't want to, uh, to go further with the development of OpenOffice. Actually, no one wrote this, but if you study a little bit Oracle, you understand that a company that declares that wants to make 40% profit on each product will never be seriously involved in free software. You will, although you can earn your living with free software, it's almost impossible to do a 40% net profit with free software. Uh, it's just a different way of looking at, at things. So, on the 10th anniversary of the community, so at the end of September 2010, we forked and we announced LibreOffice. We announced LibreOffice and uh, we, we chose the, this name for two reasons. The first one uh, is that we wanted a name that was maybe hard to pronounce, but easy, easy to recognize. And second, we wanted to stress the fact that this uh, is a free software, but you know all the debate about free as in beer and free as in freedom. While if you choose Libre, Libre is Libre, is li is the root of liberty, and uh, you cannot have any doubt on the fact that this is a, a, a free software in the sense of freedom or liberty. That was the Latin name for for freedom. And uh, we announced the Document Foundation because the foundation was discussed uh, since the early days of OpenOffice, but then uh, it was never realized. And we wanted to have uh, an independent foundation to support the development of the software. And the reason is that uh, an independent foundation can serve the user and not the interest of a single company. Uh, although the interest of that company may be uh, very serious, but you always uh, will find a, a point, uh, as it happened with OpenOffice, where the company tells you, uh, look, we are spending the money, and so we want to have the last word on this decision. And this is something that we don't want. And the reason uh, uh, is that uh, we want to serve the interest of the users being ourselves the first users of the software. And uh, what we have written in our bios is that any company, even companies investing a lot of money in LibreOffice, cannot have more than 30% representatives in any of the bodies of the foundation. So just to make a clear example, the board of directors is seven people, I'm one of them, and there are two people from SUSE. There cannot be a third person from SUSE in the board of directors, because two out of seven is already close to 30%. Uh, if uh, another person is elected, from SUSE is elected, one of, they have to decide one of the three has to be signed. There's no way that there can be three people in a seven-person body 
from a single company. And this is not because we don't trust SUSE, it's because we want uh, to promote diversity. So we have SUSE, we have Red Hat, uh, we have Canonical, we have independent people in the, the board of directors. Each one brings uh, his uh, own uh, vision of user interest, and this is real diversity. Okay, so basically what happened in when we formed, we took uh, this umbrella culture that was uh, the sun culture, you have a company that basically protects the project, but at the end takes most of the decision because it's uh, overprotective. <coughs> and uh, we have just turned the umbrella upside down, so if this is like this, turn upside down, and we have created a mixing bowl. Or uh, if you prefer, you can, uh, you can see this as a boat, where uh, everyone, uh, in order to make the boat go straight, everyone has to row in the same direction. If there's someone that rows in a different direction, then the boat will start turning around and going nowhere. So this is uh, actually represents visually what has happened with uh, our firm? We took a, a corporate control pro, pro, project and we made it a user control project or a community control project. Of course, it's not easy, it's difficult, it takes time, it's challenging, but it's also rewarding. And um, of course, the, the first the first problem that we faced was development. Uh, when we thought that the number of developers that we could count on was probably around uh, two dozens, 24 people, 20 to 24 people. And as you can understand, uh, a 12 million lines of code project cannot live with 24 developers. Either they are fully working full time, fully committed on that project, which is probably possible in free software, or you can you you must have the other developers and especially volunteers. So we basically starting from uh, this uh, document, which is not extremely well known, but it's an Apache Foundation document. Actually, it was an email written in a, in, a, in a discussion in an Apache Foundation project. And this email was then uh, took as a document of reference by the Apache Foundation. And this email basically says, if you grow the community and you have developers, you have to accept the way that developers work. So you have to accept the fact that a developer can work for a week and then can uh, just go away for a month and then come back. And uh, you don't have to discuss with developers about their productivity. You don't have to discuss with developers about, uh, about the hours they are devoting because they are developers. So they have to be, they, they have to enjoy what they do and they have to get fun on, on developing. So basically, starting uh, on this kind of principles, our developers, this is mo more or less the picture of our developers at the day of the fourth, our developers, Created a couple, created a, I think, a, an amazing way of bringing in uh, other people. So they, this was launched on day one, and it was called the Easy Act, LibreOffice Easy Acts. LibreOffice Easy Act starts from translating comments from German to English. Uh, you have um, cleaning uh, useless comments from the help, uh, which is what I've done. I have uh, six comments on just by removing useless comments from the help files, and the help files are XML, so this is where I can work. Is uh, removing deprecated libraries. There were libraries deprecated for eight years that they, they were still in the code. And you can understand that if you keep on uh, growing the code and adding and replacing libraries, but you don't get rid of the old libraries, then the code becomes bloated, slow. And uh, 
And of course, uh, this allowed to have people uh, uh, curious enough to start in from uh, day one. And uh, <coughs> soon uh, we started to have a growing list of completed eggs. So now the two lists are more or less the same size, and, uh, but developers are starting to add uh, new easy apps. Uh, but at the moment, uh, as we have uh, reached a very good level of number of developers, they start to add uh, challenging acts and so on. So it's more complex. And, uh, but what that, it did mean? It mean that at first, the most senior developers, and this is Michael Nix from SUSE, is the main engineer, main LibreOffice engineer of uh, SUSE. Instead of focusing all their time on developing features, they, they, they spend a lot of time on mentoring new people just to teach them how to get up to speed uh, by hacking uh, LibreOffice. And uh, we organized Hackfest, one in Munich, one in Hamburg. Uh, if you can't, there, there will be one, uh, one in Munich in, uh, at the end of November. If you come to one of these Hackfest, you will have the opportunity to sit side to side with a, with a senior developer and uh, understand how the code is, understand how you can uh, work inside the code, understand how you can uh, uh, solve bugs, how you can commit patches, how you can develop features. And this has all paid because uh, we started to have a, let's say, a more complex, a more uh, uh, strange, in, some, in, in, in a sense, way of developing the software because uh, the easy app were, were developed together with features and together with patches and they were just going into the, into the, the code. So it's uh, something that was never done, like translating comments in German. We started to do that, so we slowly started to have uh, more and more of the code commented in English and not commented in German. And uh, the community started to grow. And today, and this is the number of <coughs> developers. So these are the, the first 20, and it was September 2010. But you see that in October, we went up to over 100 because there were 80 people just out of curiosity coming in and doing a, a, an easy act. Some of them, and I can uh, mention one person in, in particular, uh, Norbert Thiebaud is a senior software engineer, he's a French, but he lives in Texas. He's now one of the most active developers. We will see him again on, on the top 20 developers. And he's now not just working on hacks, but he's managing all the development infrastructure. He was so senior to, to step in very quickly and it was able to start developing uh, features very quickly because it was very experienced as a developer. And now is the, the, the man that handles all the Tinder boxes that compile uh, LibreOffice on a daily basis just to uh, show to developers if their patches are breaking the code or are creating some problems. So this is amazing because we are at over 500. Actually, we are at 543 as of yesterday, uh, but we are growing at least, as you can see, at a, at a monthly rate of uh, 10 to 20 new developers. Of course, these are mostly volunteers, so most of them are not staying on a daily basis. This is more or less the split. So we have around 60, core developers, they are working, we can say that they are working on a daily basis. Then we have regular, 160, more or less, and they are working on a weekly basis, so they develop something each week. And then you have the occasional, like myself, probably every month, every couple of months, 
uh, it depends from, from uh, time availability, of course. But this means that we started with only core developers, and they were focused on uh, mentoring, on developing features, on solving bugs, on doing everything. So now that they, they have uh, grown a second wave of core developers, because the first people that started two years ago are now working uh, on the code on a, and are considered senior developers there. Some of them are members of the engineering steering committee. So the second wave is mentoring the, the, the fourth wave. Let's say that the first people mentored the second wave and then uh, started to concentrate on new features. So the, the reason why you, you see now more features added to LibreOffice or more uh, uh, bugs solved uh, is that we have freed the time of the core developers because they have mentored a new generation of developers that is now taking care of mentoring another generation. And this will uh, grow in waves in the future because this is uh, what we uh, dreamed, we can say, uh, and the f during the first days, but the dream must become a reality. So now we have, uh, and, and this has also managed to make the community a lot more balanced. If uh, uh, I, if the, the 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 pie before the fork would have been all this sun, and the grey one would be volunteer. We have completely turned the pie because this is the former Sun Oracle uh, code. And this is Volunteers, this is SUSE, this is Red Hat, this is Canonical, and these are other companies. But you can see that this is very balanced because, uh, of course, these, all these people are full time, all these people are volunteers, so are not full time. Uh, and it's growing on a yearly basis because if we look at that, you can see that this chunk, which was the Oracle chunk, has decreased in over, over the last year. Volunteers have increased while Susan and uh, Oracle are more or less the same. But you can see that we have, we have more small companies contributing to the code. Of course, they, the number of commits they, they are uh, they are uh, developing is, is lower because these are companies with maybe a couple of developers while SUSE has more than 20, Red Hat more than 10 and so on. But this is positive because you see new people coming in and new people coming uh, with different interests. And this is the, the community, if you look at individual numbers, so these are volunteers. You see it's almost 75% are volunteers. Uh, this is the former uh, old code. And these are the, the other companies. Of course, if you look at number of commits, then you see SUSE and Oracle and Canonical adding more, but they have full-time people, while volunteers are not full-time people. And if you look at this, you also see how this has grown over the last year. And uh, looking at growth is important because it uh, shows that the community is active. So it's not stay, standing still. And these are the top 20 acres. Uh, this is uh, Norbert. So Norbert Yebo is this one. And uh, as you can see, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is the eight developers. He has committed the first, the first patch on September 28, 2010. So, uh, and Thomas Arno is another volunteer. Marcus uh, is another volunteer. Actually, Marcus is a is a student. He's a German student. He's 24 years old. And in, in two years, he is, I can say, is one of the, our top three calc hackers. Then you have uh, other volunteers here. And uh, 
This is just to show that the, that the community is moving. This gentleman, Calvo McNamara, read that, is just one man. So it's, Calvin doesn't speak. Actually, for the first year, he sent only me one email with plus one, and that was all I kept, could get from him. And Kaolan codes, as you can see. Kaolan is just incredible. I mean, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. And uh, you can see, but unfortunately for Kaolan, you can see that the contribution of Kaolan over the last year has decreased a little bit because there are other people that have increased. And actually, just to show you something, the last two guys, uh, there's still one uh, oracle, Frank Schoenig, in, uh, in 2011. But these two guys, one and two, that were still active, still in the top 20 developers, these were oracle guys. So they, they, they didn't commit to LibreOffice, they were committing to OpenOffice. But of course, integrating the OpenOffice code, we counted their commits as well. They were still there in 2011, they have disappeared in 2012. Uh, because the, there is people, the, especially volunteers, that are adding commits, so are growing uh, in importance in the community. And this is the last, uh, I was telling you before, of new contribution. This is important because it uh, shows the real diversity. This is a project founded by the royal family of Saudi Arabia. Uh, they have a project that uh, I, I cannot pronounce it. Is, uh, the, the, name, the, 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 the algorithm in, uh, in Arabian in, in, would be KAXT. K-A-C-S-T uh, is an Arabic name. Uh, is a is an open source project founded by the royal family of Arabia. They have 12 people working on LibreOffice and solving, uh, in some cases, stupid bugs related to writing from right to left and to using characters which are not the characters we are used, so the, let's call, European. Uh, you have some special characters we in Italy we have uh, but it's uh, our languages are easy to read uh, if, if, even if you don't understand a lot about the pronunciation of a specific uh, of a specific character with a diacritic sign but you at least you recognize the character uh, if you look at the Arabian this looks like Leo but in fact it's not it's Leo for us but in, in Arabic, you read it in this sense, and it's not real at all. So it's, uh, it's completely unrecognizable for us. And uh, they already solved uh, a number of bugs related to this kind of uh, writing. And uh, one amazing bug that no one noticed in 12 years of existence of the code is that you could not use Arab numbers in, uh, uh, in number lists. You know that our, our European numbers are coming from the Arab numbers, but they are now European numbers. But the Arab numbers, in the sense that written in Arabic, could not be used. The software would crash. Uh, and they, this was the first bug that they, actually there was a guy that showed up and said, do you know that the software crashes if we use our numbers? We, in, 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 uh, in all the Arabic countries, they were forced to use our numbers to do their validated list. And they could not use their numbers. Of course, it's easy to recognize the numbers because they're mo most of them are international. But I think it's a right of people speaking uh, Arabic to use their, also their numbers when they want to use a software. So this is uh, extremely important to grow diversity and to grow new communities speaking different languages and with different cultures because they can only add quality to the software. So we have uh, achieved a number of, uh, of things uh, 
One is translating the German comments. We have removed libraries and so on. Uh, in addition, we have created a, a background for quality assurance. Uh, Tinderbox did not exist before. So the, you had to rely on an engineer in Hamburg to, uh, to compile the software after each patch, because otherwise it was impossible. Now we have 14 machines that are compiling software, the software after each commit, so the developer can <coughs> test immediately if the commit breaks, breaks the, 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 the software, the code. Uh, nine of the Tinder boxes update daily's uh, version of the software for the QA people. So we have started uh, slowly but growing to add people handling QA because they now have dailies to work on uh, and they don't have to wait the engineer in Hamburg to compile the software to make the test. This is, comes every day. Then uh, uh, we have developed and uh, started to use BBSect or binary bisect to catch up regressions. The problem, of course, is that if you develop a software with a pace that LibreOffice is developed, so uh, with a monthly release and so on, uh, it's difficult to catch regression because you have so many compiles that you, it's difficult to find uh, the place where the regression started to appear. So with BBSEC, you basically stuff into one single large uh, compilation a number of uh, com software compilations and uh, using it you can easily pick up the version, the, 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 the position where the regression appeared and you can work on that. So you don't have just to act by guessing, you just act by using uh, uh, developer's tools and so on. We have, uh, this is still a little bit too complicated and people is working on it, but we have made a, a bug submission assistant to, for people that is not technically skilled. The first time I saw Bugzilla I said, it's impossible, you know. Uh, I have a, my background is in uh, humanities, uh, uh, I am 58, so I wrote my thesis on a typewriter and I saw the first computer when I was 27. So you can understand that I've already made a number of strides by being a technical guy, but there is a threshold that is difficult for me. And uh, if I have, you know, to uh, tell me which is the what happens? I mean, what happens? It crashes. For me, it crashes. I cannot give any other explanation. Uh, so for uh, people like me, this helps a little bit in, uh, uh, in submitting bugs. And then uh, we have started to do automatic tests. Of course, the automatic tests are not good as the tests do done by a human. But for trivial stuff, automatic tests solve a huge amount of problems. It's just uh, useless to have humans do basic testing. Uh, you can have humans do more complicated testing and let the basic testing done by machines. These are the, the mythos that, these were unused mythos and these are the unused mythos that have been removed. Of course there are still some probably the most difficult, but you can see we went down from 5,000 to less than 500. And this makes the software easier and uh, a little bit leaner. Although it's, uh, we still uh, have to work a little bit on, uh, on uh, speed, uh, but the software is easier to manage for developers. That was, the, our main task was to make it easier to manage to developers. And then uh, these are the German comments, as you see still over 20, there were more than 50,000 German comments. 
Now we are slightly more than 20,000, it's still too many, but it's decreasing uh, with every version. So that's, uh, if you look at, if you remember this, uh, actually we have exactly done what it was said in 2006, but never done. So we have reduced cost complexity, we have improved batch handling, and we have mentored newbies. And this is the beauty of the independent foundation, because there was no one to stop you or to block you from doing this uh, because of interest. And I can tell you, the interest of uh, removing, uh, making easier batch handling, if you have people paid to handle patches, the people that are paid to handle patches uh, do not see volunteers handling patches as friends because they, they think that this is a risk for their job. And uh, the same for reduction of code complexity. If there is a brilliant volunteer developer doing what I, what I do, the risk is that he gets hired and I get fired. You know, so that's uh, because there is just a single company controlling the development. And this is what we don't want. We don't want in any of our actions be dependent from one single company. Full stop. <laughs> and this is the growth of downloads. Uh, just a very small explanation. Of course, having a monthly release uh, uh, time-based schedule, uh, we have peaks for some releases. This was 3.6.2, it was extremely successful, but I think it's just, you know, we are growing over time, this is the trend, and uh, the more people know us, and uh, the more people will download the, the, the software. Actually, downloads are 90 I would say 95 to 96 percent on Windows and Macintosh. They're not on Linux because Linux uh, users usually get LibreOffice from the repository of their distribution. So they, we only have a few Linux users that download because they want to have the latest version before it gets integrated into the repository. And all, not all the distribution uh, integrate the latest version into the repository very quickly, so some users want to have it immediately. Uh, but again, uh, it's improving also that way, because now we have Canonical, SUSE, Fedora, and uh, probably Linux Mint integrating the, last, the, the latest version immediately, so that uh, you start to have to at least a uh, 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 Debian-based distribution and an RP to RPM based distribution integrating and with repositories with the latest version. So it starts to become easier for everyone to get the latest version from the repository. But what about volunteers? Volunteers can do a huge amount of stuff, but what is, was very important for us was to have volunteers able to develop features something that never or almost never happened in the, in the previous 10 years. So the, all what I'm showing you are features developed by volunteers. So Greek numbering is like Arab numbering. You cannot use Greek, you couldn't use Greek numbers in a valid list. That would crash the software. Uh, this is a trivial development just with every other software, hitting Ctrl F opens search. It was not opening anything before. Uh, improvement of uh, on rasterization of curves. The visual import filter. This is actually a nice feature. Started, this has started to be developed as a Google Summer of Code project by a very nice Scottish girl, Eileen McAdam. She started as a Google Summer of Code. Then she went on 
developing the libraries and improving the libraries as a volunteer, and now she's employed full time by one of the companies working on LibreOffice code. So that you show that you see that by being a volunteer and a, of course a good developer, you can easily find a job now inside the, uh, the LibreOffice ecosystem. This is always visual. And now we have added uh, Corendro. We are starting to work uh, on uh, uh, Microsoft Publisher import. Uh, we want to offer the user the largest number of import filters for their interoperability with other software. This is another interesting feature. It's real-time character counting. It was impossible before. And this was a professional writer that developed that because he needed to have real-time uh, character count. Uh, importing PPDX SmartArt, you know that this is a Microsoft proprietary, although standardized uh, format. And uh, this is uh, anything but a standard. It's uh, a proprietary way of uh, designing this kind of uh, images, which are nice in some cases. They were in impossible to import. Now you can import them without losing the formatting. Uh, another a business card, it, it started as a business card wizard. If I want to print business card using LibreOffice, how can I do? Do I have to become crazy every time in calculating the size and so on? Corel import filter. This is actually being developed by a paid developer during these weekends. So it's, uh, you know, is it a, a paid developer feature or a volunteer feature? Uh, I think it's a volunteer feature because if you spend your weekends in developing a, a, a filter, even if you're paid during the week, then you, you show that you, you are a volunteer in addition to be a paid developer. PDF export with watermark. Now you can PDF exporting has always been a feature of uh, OpenOffice and LibreOffice, but it was impossible to add a watermark. This, for instance, is a key feature for legal people uh, because you know that they have the document that is at the draft stage and they have to write that is a draft uh, because they write contracts. So if a contract is a draft, uh, a signature also on a draft contract is not, ver is not valid. Uh, and this again was uh, someone uh, employed by a lawyer that developed this feature. So now you can write a draft, <coughs> nice draft uh, word on, on top of a document to show that it's a draft or any other word, of course. And uh, of course, uh, being in a, a, in, a, in a Linux environment, it's easy to tell you that in, uh, in the Linux environment, LibreOffice is a standard, is a 100% standard. There are multiple reasons for that. First of all is that many of our developers are also Linux developers. So they, they, they do their, some of their work in other Linux communities. We have people uh, working in Fedora, we have people working in Gentoo, we have Mandriva, we have people working at Slackware and uh, Sabayon. Uh, uh, and open source. So these are volunteers that are contributing to LibreOffice but also to a Linux distribution. So it's easy for them to do the packaging. In addition, uh, two of the main sponsors of the LibreOffice project, corporate sponsors, are SUSE and Red Hat, which are of course Linux based companies. And so this uh, and, uh, and our packaging on Linux is done, uh, I would say, perfectly by our SUSE and Red Hat guys. So that makes it uh, easy for the Linux community to integrate LibreOffice inside the, their distribution. We use a, a standard format, uh, ODF. Uh, uh, it's very important to use ODF uh, and not to use uh, proprietary formats. Uh, 
I know that if you are working in uh, corporate environments, sometimes corporations are, are hard to convince about using uh, a, soft, uh, a format that is not a Microsoft-based format. Uh, uh, the fact is that this is really a standard format, it's not embedding any proprietary part. The Microsoft uh, so-called standard formats are embedding Microsoft proprietary or binary formats. Uh, and uh, only by supporting standard formats we can uh, really free the user, liberate the user from uh, using uh, proprietary formats. Only a few people know that the license of uh, Microsoft Office is also licensing the, the, the format. So in, uh, theoretically, you can use the Microsoft formats only if you use Microsoft Office. Of course, it's not this way, but the reality is that the license would say this. Uh, and uh, we have also started to grow the number of platforms. So we have, uh, of course, a desktop version, and desktop for us means uh, uh, Windows, Macintosh, Linux in terms of, uh, uh, of platforms. Uh, uh, there, is, there is also people uh, uh, developing or porting a version on a BSD family of, of operating system. Someone uh, porting that on uh, the former Solaris, Sun Solaris uh, operating system. But these are very much niche areas uh, and uh, we as a foundation we don't uh, supply that officially from our repository, from our mirrors. Uh, of course, uh, uh, our, our code, uh, source code is, is available, so every, any people that wants to make uh, LibreOffice available on, a, on, another, on another platform uh, can do that. But we have started to, to develop uh, a cloud version of uh, LibreOffice, and we have started to develop a tablet version of LibreOffice. They're still under development. It's interesting to see how they are, they are uh, progressing. Uh, we will have, let's say, a, a, a situation next week in Berlin where we have our yearly conference. So these are, uh, this is the situation. And uh, we also, uh, as a final information, we are trying to grow the ecosystem by uh, recognizing the work of people that uh, use uh, LibreOffice for doing business. So we, we will soon start up officially a certification program. The certification program is already online in terms of uh, outline. Uh, people that is using, uh, is migrating to LibreOffice or is, is developing uh, patches or features on LibreOffice or is, is training other people on LibreOffice or is supporting other people by using LibreOffice can become certified uh, for their activities uh, in order to be recognized by the enterprise world uh, and in order to be able to sell uh, their services based on a, on a recognition and not just on uh, uh, the assumption that you are able to do something. Uh, so the certification will be on, uh, on different areas uh, and uh, you can find uh, the, the, a deeper explanation on, on uh, our website where the certification program is outlined. Of course, the project is still a young project. So, though it's two years, but two years is almost nothing if you think that uh, OpenOffice uh, was 10 years before we forked and uh, some distribution are uh, over 15 years uh, of age. So, we still need uh, some time to become a mature project. Uh, we, are, we, we, we have been focusing on development for the first two years and we will be focusing on developing other areas in the next two years uh, uh, without forgetting about development, of course. Uh, in the meantime, we have managed to be recognized by InfoWorld as uh, uh, the, 
best of open source software in 2011 and 2012. But the, the fact is that we have just begun, for those two years, we have just begun our uh, journey. And uh, we, have a, we have set a, a, an objective date in 2020. Uh, I don't know. I will be 66 at the time, so I don't know if I will be able to go, go around and, and, and talk about LibreOffice, but I hope uh, to be and I hope to meet you again sometime somewhere else uh, or even in Poland uh, another time. Uh, and uh, these are all my references. Uh, you can write me. I receive over 500 emails per day, so if I don't answer immediately, Please bear with me, I will not lose your emails and I will answer. <coughs> Let's say in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs>
you should understand the philosophy behind the software and I think that this is key. There was another question. Yes, there is another question. Uh, we know that uh, LibreOffice is pretty young software, uh, but can you compare the number of users uh, to OpenOffice? It's, uh, it's really extremely difficult to do, to do this because uh, we don't have licenses to, that are uh, activated. So it's, uh, all numbers can be based on uh, downloads uh, and uh, but downloads in some cases do not represent the number of users because uh, for instance at the French ministries, French government, there is half a million of LibreOffice users. There is not a single download because they are uh, creating their own, uh, their own distribution, so they are not going through our mirrors. So let's say that we have uh, around 30 million users on Linux because the Linux uh, number of few desktop Linux users worldwide is considered about 35 million so we, we estimate to have 30 million users there and we probably have uh, another 30 million users in, uh, in Windows and Macintosh based on the number of downloads the downloads from other websites installation from CDs and so on so it's difficult to compare uh, with other free software because uh, the metrics are always the same, so it, uh, there's no that a license activation and missing the license activation you miss the numbers. Of course, uh, the numbers, uh, download numbers of OpenOffice are higher because there, is a, there was a, a larger install base than, uh, so the automatic updates are uh, triggering uh, an OpenOffice download, but this is uh, decreasing over time uh, and uh, of course it, it will take a little bit of time uh, but uh, you should consider for instance that in the last six months there have, there have only been migration to LibreOffice and not more migration to OpenOffice and many of the former users of OpenOffice are migrating to LibreOffice so this is happening for instance in Italy with the Regione Umbria is happening for the French government is happening with the city of Munich uh, in uh, Germany, is happening with the uh, Spanish government, uh, uh, the province of Milano in Italy, and so on. So the, the number of uh, migration is increasing, uh, and it will always be difficult to have exact numbers. Okay, uh, we must finish because of our time. And uh, 